Let me see, man. This for Andre Hicks. It's a lot of mystery, a lot of secrets surrounding his death, man. And being that, you know, he lived and um, developed his style in Sacramento was highly influenced by us. You know, it's only right we share, you know, our truths and what how we knew Mac Dre and what happened and what people living out. Because, unfortunately, when Mac Dre died, you know, there was a lot of haters on his team that was like, you know, let's keep it Bay Area, let's keep it Bay Area, we all one thing. But Mac Dre was on his own thing and is pushing the movement itself. And he was in Sacramento, right, <clears throat> doing his thing. And anybody know, man, Sacramento always been a fun place, especially if you're from the Bay, you don't gang bang, a place you can get away. It's a lot of clubs. Uh, it's very diverse. A lot of women out here, a lot of clubs. Things you can get into, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? A nice car scene. So, Mac Dre found a lot of peace and was chilling out here. Man, a, a lot of rappers was out here. Keep the Sneak, E-40. This is where you will see a lot of these people <clears throat> that you see on TV. We will see them every day. But, you know, just like any city you in, you got to show your respect to the niggas that, whose house it is. And that's how we developed a relationship with Mac Dre. Mac Dre, I would see come out the trap spot and Mac Dre would be buying some pills from us or hanging out, smoking a blunt, something like that. Just, you know, you know, shooting the shit, us doing our thing. I say that to say, you feel me? He linked with a couple niggas from G Parkway. You know what I'm saying? And one of my partners named Bad from Metaview. So they created, um, what was that group called? Uh, Something terrible. S-T-U-P-I-D. When we go to the club, we don't need it. That was them. <clears throat> when you turn on any one of Mac Dre's <clears throat> videos, that's them dancing in the background. You know, just for evidence. It wasn't J. Diggs. It wasn't um, Sugar Wolf. The niggas was older. They was romper room gang. They was on that old swag. They really didn't have that bounce and that energy that we did being from Sacramento. We like to dance a lot. We still do. We like to be in them clubs. We like to show out. You know, we was already wearing big glasses and everything. You know, you can roll the footage if you don't know what I mean, right? <clears throat> the whole um, Trill TV was shot in clubs in Sacramento, Cafe New Orleans, um, Vladis, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the cabaret, shit like that. Um, Mac Dre was all a part of that. That's what influenced him a lot. So, we would get Mac Dre music. He would he'd be like, here, listen to this way before it came out. We would all be making dances and shit up. So, when Stupid, uh, Go Stupid Go Out come out, you know what I'm saying? And it go crazy. That's when he started realizing that these little sack niggas is the movement and start getting behind them. But, you know, his niggas from the base and he blowing up and was like, bro, you should be fucking with us. But if you notice and look around, you don't see them really on the projects with Mac Dre. They really ran off with this after he died. Now let's get into that. <clears throat> Being in SAC and how a lot of this transpired in SAC. <clears throat> the night he died, he was in his van. It flipped over, you know. You know, um, a lot of people see it on the freeway and called the police. These are from, you know what I'm saying, court records. But what they're not saying is, is, you know, is who was there, right? Because I'm going to keep it real. We roll with Mac Dre as an entourage, and not only, you feel me, was we, you know, part of the the swag and the energy, but we were security a lot of times and made sure he was cool. A lot of times, Mac Dre would be in that van getting ready for a gig, you feel me, turning up. You know, I was at a few of his shows when he had to get his stomach pumped, you feel me? You could say, we sold him his pills and, and gave him his weed and shit, you feel me? So, we knew a lot of his habits and the things he did. One thing about Mac Dre that stood out the most was he was an amazing businessman. So him having a problem with a promoter in Kansas City really don't make sense. But here it is. We got this shysty shady nigga from our hood named Nucci, right? Mr. Fabby Davis relative. 
he was Mac Dre's manager. So when y'all doing these interviews and y'all looking at what's going on, you got to look at the manager. This is somebody who every time, right, <clears throat> has to make your itinerary, set everything up. The main job is the manager is to handle all the business so the artist can do his thing. So when it's a, a, a contract dispute, manager handles that, not Mac Dre. Mac Dre ain't going to be arguing with no promoters and stuff. So, a little background about Mac Dre. Mac Dre was so popular at the time, he would do like three, four shows a day. Right? Have us in the crowd, you feel me, rapping his songs while, you know what I'm saying, he on drugs and shit. Right? He had a routine. I say that to say, he was doing multiple shows, and somebody would have to go manage the money, go pick up the money. They would send the first cut, then they... You when you get there, you have your manager pick everything else, check everything else, make sure everything's to your liking. Bam. His manager was Nucci. Nucci was there that night. And this ain't nothing I ain't said to Nucci to his face before. Right? So when they having that problem, and Mac Dre pull off in the truck, for one. Who was he with? Was he in that motherfucking van by himself when they shot it up? And what was the problem? The manager should have already took care of the money problem unless the manager was in on taking some of the money, which would make the promoter and Matt Dre have a problem. See what I'm saying? So, and all and Matt Dre doing multiple shows a night, you know he got some dollars on him. So if there's any problems like that reports are saying where Mac Dre left because he didn't feel uncomfortable, why he didn't feel uncomfortable? There was a discrepancy with what was supposed to be going on. You feel me? So, allegedly, the manager showed up, got the money, pocketed it, and when Mac Dre thought he was do a show, he really wasn't, which caused the manager and Mac Dre to have words to flow. Mac Dre said he don't feel comfortable. He getting up out of here. You feel me? Now, he hop on the highway and car pull up and gun him down. Now, this is what I know firsthand. His manager, before the police, this is what we got to be asking questions about. His manager showed up first on the scene. Mac Drayden got shot up in his car. He got bullets in him. This supposed to be a homie too, though. Nucci show first on the scene. Mac Drayden got ejected from his car and shot up. You feel me? When they shot up the car he was driving in. Nucci, the first nigga on the scene, even before the police show up, his manager. Take his chains and his jewelry off. No, what else? Whatever else Mac Dre had on him. You feel me? And disappeared before the cops came. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why he said he did it was because he didn't want no niggas to take his shit, his jewelry. Supposedly he gave it back to the family because the niggas got on his head about it. But what else did he take? What type of niggas show up? Right after the first, right when your homeboy get killed and you not just discombobulated. Especially a nigga like me, I'm going to flip out and try to tear something up. Especially if I know something going on and shit. You the last nigga, you the manager. 